This is Dust War Journals, episode 43, your number one stop for all news and discussion related to Dust 1947. My name is Johannes, and joining me today are... Magnus. And of course. Yeah, Luda. And it's a little bit of a special weird occasion today because we're trying a lot of different things. Uh, first off, we are live streaming Yay! this episode. So a uh, big hello to all of you out there who are watching live. Yeah. I'm not really having a good overview of the uh, of the chat and such, but I think Magnus at least is. And yeah, I'm, I uh, I'm trying. So chatting. we have 10 people at the moment uh, watching us. Yeah. Okay, so we're uh, cool. tired. So <laughs> trying to keep an eye. On, no, the, me, actually. I, on the chat here to yeah, see yeah, if good. Yeah. people are writing something. So. Yeah. That is awesome. And we, we also have some other um, kind of things that we are going to try. But we're going to talk a little bit mm-hmm. more about that later. So uh, first off, we, we usually talk uh, hobby stuff first. And I think you, Luda, said that you had something specific that you had prepared for this. Uh, yeah, well, uh, the thing is, I would like to throw out a challenge here because oh. I'm thinking... Sometimes, um, and I have informed you about it beforehand, as per, per, I guess people notice when they look at the screen and what's on the tables and stuff, but uh, just I wanted to have a competition, uh, not only between us, but with the people uh, at home. And I wanted to, um, you know, we, I think sometimes we are a little bit stale. Uh, we are a little bit stiff. Uh, we, we just sit around and we just uh, jap around. So I was thinking, why not try to do something and just uh, see if that causes some havoc or something so it's actually <laughs> the sure Luda, it will well yeah it's the luda painting contest <laughs> and the thing that is is that uh, we all choose a model whatever and uh, during this podcast now we're going to paint it and then afterwards we're going to display it <laughs> <laughs> how far we actually went yeah with it so yeah uh, and you out there guys you vote for the best uh, minis and uh, the best in show. Best in show, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the one that uh, from the one that wins the competition uh, with your votes, we will pick one winner that gets something out of our extremely wonderful goodie bag of toys. From a horde. <laughs> yeah, we, it, it's going to be something very exclusive, very special, very nice. Something that we have in the. Uh, from, from the Dust Studios that they have been so kind to, to give us uh, over the last couple of months. So uh, expect something that could be really fun. Um, I don't know if they should... Uh, well, we should make it easy. We, we will s- select something for you. Uh, all yeah, you that's the simplest is, thing. Yes, yeah. absolutely. And since you are better organizing tournaments or, the, to, or the competitions and mm-hmm. stuff like that, if you want to add something of how we should do this and how things will be, just... yeah, uh, it's going to be. An, uh, you just have to pick. Pick. We're going to show it, of course, in the uh, at the end of the, this episode on the stream. We are also going to put up some pictures of the finished models uh, on the web page and on the Facebook page, including a link to a submit form. Uh, so you can go and submit your your vote and your contact details so we can get in touch with you. And we will then uh, reveal the winner and the actual prize in, uh, should we say, next episode in a month? Yeah, why not? Why not? Yeah. Sounds, sounds, sounds fair to me. Yeah. Um, so this is, yeah, like you said, this is the ad hoc episode. We yeah. are like just throwing <laughs> stuff at the wall and seeing what sticks. Not yeah. literally, but... <laughs> it might be a catastrophe, this, but yeah. or perhaps you will join us. Perhaps you can uh, post some pictures of the things you might be painting while yeah. you're watching this. Uh, you can do that also if you're not watching live, of course. Yeah, sure. Uh, I heard some people are listening more to us and painting at the same time or doing other hobby stuff. So why not just uh, share with us what you're doing while that you're... That uh, is not for you. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, for me, I'm, I, I have a little model here I've never painted, which I'm ashamed of. Uh, this is actually the Laura model I will try to do oh, something with. I I've never done you. that. So I thought it was... Um, very, very interesting. And uh, for me, I've selected something that uh, I think we're going to talk a little bit more about yeah. you and I because I chose one of my unpainted uh, cadets for the IJN. Yes, great. And uh, yeah, we're going mm-hmm. to talk a little bit more <laughs> about uh, about those in a bit, I think. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah. Magnus, so, what do you have? Brought? I chose Desert Scorpion uh, Kill Squad. Oh yeah. Great. And this is the primary model that I'm planning to paint, but I also brought the rest of the guys in that unit because yeah. usually I like to to like batch paint yeah, four, of course, four yeah. or five models. That's mm-hmm. that's a you know good standard for me to, to try to paint at the same time. Yeah. Otherwise you might 
forget exactly what colors you used or whatever. So yeah, that's true. Well, you, you know, for for me, I'm a, a slow painter. It goes. Uh, I've, I've mentioned that a lot of times, and it goes a long time be between sessions for me. So what I usually do when I painted a model uh, that I'm uh, at least uh, satisfied with, mm -hmm. and uh, I know I have to do. Uh, like another unit of the same or something something similar i usually just take a picture actually with the model and the paints so mm. i can see exactly these are the paints that i used Good one. so Good that one. that is my kind of trick to do that right yeah i might also mention that um my goal with this is to paint these guys in a way that is like similar to the premium because i do have a couple of units yeah, you do. Yeah, that's but, true. But I don't want, I can't really actually afford the whole army to mm. be premium. And I also enjoy painting. So I want to paint these kind of similar. They don't have to be an exact match. And I've chosen a few colors here that will be okay, I think, I hope. Yeah. <laughs> uh, because as I see it, the Death Scorpions, they are sort of a, a patchwork of an army anyway. That's true. Guys coming from, you know, all over the place. So it, they don't have to be... The, in the exact same uniform or stuff like that. So, mm -hmm. so yeah, I, I hope these guys will blend in with the premium ones. Yeah, nice. yeah, I, yeah, I found that with the allies overall, that it's very nice that you can actually almost paint them with any f color scheme you like if you want to, because you can always say this is a mixed regiment or something. They are coming mm -hmm. from different parts and these haven't got the new uniforms for the new camouflage from this and that and stuff like that so yeah and i'll actually throw in some uh, um, uh, yeah. heavy uh, flamer dudes as well uh, i will mainly try to focus on this one because i'm also quite yeah. slow i think so uh but i think i doodle with these yeah. at the same time just to uh well yeah, yeah. keep yourself some. occupied in yeah. a way so, but, and, uh, for th this is going to be very interesting uh, because uh, at least from uh, kind of my perspective hmm? you look seem like you are used to doing this kind of multitasking like painting at the same I, people have seen you paint your miniatures between rounds of the tournaments <laughs> yeah that's it that's also what, why i i think I, I i had that in the back of my head when i uh, advised this or something like came, came up with the idea because i uh you know it's, it's just it's fun to do uh, a little doodling while you're doing something else and yeah. just uh, multitask and see what happens and i mean uh, yeah um, you know, I, <laughs> I, th I yeah. think uh, for, for me, it's uh, much more focused, mm. so it's going to be very interesting to see if this is actually <laughs> possible for me to do at yeah. the same time. Well, so. if we, might wind, we might winding up with just a boot, <laughs> <laughs> and this is not going to be a podcast when we just sit here around painting, of course. No, no, we we off, be, uh, it's going yeah. to be an ordinary show, you yeah, say, yeah, especially definitely. for you uh, audio listeners, so you don't have to worry about that at all. <laughs> so, well, first off, I'm going to find something that I could use as a palette. Yeah, sure. I Absolutely. Okay. Forget to bring that. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. But uh, in the meantime, I think uh, you and I could actually talk about the match that we had a few weeks oh, yeah, ago yeah, because that was absolutely my, awesome. Uh, because that that's definitely part of hobby time. Oh, oh yeah, I and, have uh, it on my schedule here actually. Yeah, so, it's you... uh, and I I have to say it was a very interesting match for several reasons. Uh, oh, yes. First off, I played the IJN for the first time ever, and you played the Steel Guard not for the first time, but you rarely do that. Uh, well, yeah, I, I have. A I had patches of Steel Guard play, but uh, it was a, a wild, uh, and since I did it before, last time I mean, and mm -hmm. but then also, I'm gonna actually pull something other out of the mind. Oh, you got something here. for show and tell. Yeah, well I have a lot of things on show and tell here actually, so people are probably gonna uh, tire of me, but, uh, <laughs> oh there's someone who wants to go up in my lap, okay, come on. Oh, no. okay. <laughs> she she well, changed her mind. Uh, I was uh, finally uh, able to get my hands, as you know, of the uh, Carl and his... Uh, yes, I am very aware of that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I actually may managed to put some paint on these guys. Oh. And I feel, well, it's a little bit paint job to do. And mm -hmm. I'm not a master. Whoa. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> I knew she wanted to come here. Turbo cat. And I was <laughs> watching her. Uh, but the thing is... Mm? And the, uh, there was some one point posting on Facebook this day about some uh, winter camouflaged ones, and they are super nice, I think. But actually, uh, and I, but I don't claim to be a good painter. But I'm, I'm, I'm very, I'm very, very pleased with how these. Mm -hmm. it turned out and this one is the one that has a little bit less paint than the other ones yeah and we for um, for the video viewers and uh, especially for you watching live we're going to 
get some good pictures of these and you, so you can see them afterwards uh, yeah. in better yeah. detail. I'll just place them here as, uh, yeah. um, in the meantime, so to speak. And um, for the ones that just listen to the audio ones, I, 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 with all my frogs, uh, all my steel guards, I try to do a color scheme that shifts. So um, I don't really know what uh, the point or the thought is, the thought process behind it, but what these mean, shift. Soft? I think the color shifts. So I, it's like I a go, fade from one shade to another. Yeah, you can, you can watch if you want it. Uh, yeah. This one. Uh, I, it, I start with the darker colors All right. beneath, and then it gets cool. lighter and lighter as far further up you come. Mm -hmm. My idea is perhaps that these are deployed in the desert, since these are brown and yellow ones, mm -hmm. and they, uh, they are meant to look a little bit like... You can't really see where they start and where they finish, so oh, like yeah, they, yeah. they it's, fade out. That's a very interesting idea, yeah. and uh, not not to kind of shortchange anything, but mm -hmm. I I am very much a fan of your of your paintwork actually. Uh -huh. okay. Yeah, be Please. because you have for me at least you have a very specific style of of painting. Mm. I mean, uh, if you look at it very closely, it looks kind of rough. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. But at the distance when you're playing a game, yeah. uh, it melts together in a very interesting way and it looks uh, like like texture ah. more than it looks like brush strokes to oh, me. <laughs> splendid, splendid. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, and that's, well, I'm not a good, um, I'm not skilled with uh, the fine brushes. So actually I've, and I actually got a new paint set from my daughter at, uh, at Christmas. Oh. And it was like uh, three pencils, uh, mm -hmm. one medium, one fine, and one uh, for... Um, uh, uh, dry brushing? Dry brushing, yeah. yeah. And I said to myself, you know, I'm just going to use these just to uh, make my daughter happy, but also to try to develop a little bit more with my painting to only use these paint, uh, these brushes for uh, for the coming future. Yeah. And I found now that I switched to do this, uh, what is the standard of this? This is a base coat Dungeon and Dragon paint uh, brush. Uh, I don't know if what size it is actually. Yeah, but, but it, um, it, if it's a base coat brush, it's probably a little bit larger than like a detail. So yeah. they, they have those kind of different. It's not yeah. really a size uh, standard, but they they have those different categories usually. Yeah. So uh, well, this one is, um, uh, and I, I found that I actually get more um, accuracy when I use this big one. Um, but also, I try to use more and more, u utilize the all different old kind of washes that are out there. So uh, actually, not putting the demand on myself to do the finer details. Mm -hmm. Try to let the, the paint do the talking for me. Uh, I would, and I would I, go actually further and say that it's, in my opinion or in my experience, there is this sort of common mistakes, mm -hmm. especially between, I mean, newer painters mm -hmm. uh, that they try to use a too small of a brush yeah my philosophy is sort of use as big of a brush as you can but still get the job done if you know what i mean yeah because yeah. if you use a too small one it's just going to take too long it's going to be too much work so it's better to to start with a maybe slightly bigger brush and if you have to, you can always go back with a detail brush and, and sort of <laughs> fix your mistakes if you want to. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, I'm definitely not an expert painter by any means. But what I've always heard is that it's not really the, the thickness of the kind of, the kind of uh, brush itself. It's the accuracy of the tip. Yeah. Ah, so if yeah, the tip yeah. is nice and holds together then you can use it for detail work mm -hmm. but you, if it's a thick brush then you can also use it for big detail so it's it's mm -hmm. the quality of the brush more than the size yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and that definitely makes sense to me I, I feel. We, we never heard that before you know it's not the size <laughs> that matters yeah exactly with it. exactly and, uh, well, uh, but let's sorry, get back to to our game please, actually please. because uh, there's, there's also there was another thing that was really cool we we talked about this in last episode as well that we tried out uh, playing on a 12 by 12 yes uh, gaming mat yeah. with, with squares and uh, i really enjoyed that i mm. really did because uh, uh, just that little bit of a difference, those three extra rows, um, it actually did make a difference in how the game felt. Yeah. Because you usually feel either um, 
constrained to the towards the sides if yep. you play from from the short sides or you feel like you're just going in and mashing together at, at the middle and this way when everything was square it's just maybe it's just because we're not used to playing it like that mm-hmm. no, no, <laughs> that no, could of, of course be uh, one of the things that made it feel very so different um, but it was ho- de- definitely harder for me, at least, to get a an overview mm-hmm. of what th- was going on basically in the match. Yeah, yeah. Um, and this game also. Uh, now we come back to one of the reasons why I'm using this as a mm-hmm. as my painting yeah, today. Yeah, yeah. Is that it? Kind of uh, clarified to me that that the fact that cadets are awesome. Yeah, they are <laughs> deadly, especially to steel guards. So yeah. uh, if you have a lot of Japanese already and you're facing steel guards, I okay, it it, it I did get the short you, you did get the short straw uh, in that game. I did. But it was so close and those uh, cadets were so hard to maneuver against. They were with their two attacks on each steel guard. Uh, it was uh, well. Yeah, then. but not only that they have uh, two attacks in close combat. They mm-hmm. also have expert. Mm-hmm. Uh, in, at least in some cases, they do have the dazzling speed, which yeah. means they get a save in close combat. Yeah. So I, I mean, yeah, uh, there's a lot of factors there that uh, really helps, and al- also the fact that I even got to use the. Um, the platoon bonus yeah. with the walkers uh, yeah. that I've been talking about, and I love it. I just, Definitely. I'm so happy about that platoon. I'm going to play that a lot. I feel in the future. Yeah, and that general, it really popped up in our both respective. Yeah, uh, uh, we we, uh, we did discuss this last episode. How mm. mu- many points do we think that Fumiko is worth with her extra uh, pass tokens? Yeah, and I think yeah, it, it's of course it's very hard to put a figure on it, but it definitely gives you a big advantage yep definitely and uh, i would say one of the few uh, okay um i was i always already told people that i think these behave very uh good in a way i mean they do not they are not overpowered they are not over uh, over overly good they are uh units that are um, and I'm talking now about the new Steel Guards uh, frogs for those who doesn't uh, look at uh, the picture. Yeah, of you mean the close combat? Yeah, the close are. combat guys. Mm. Uh, but they are very, they they are very very um, balanced. So they do exactly what you want them to do. Not more, not less. And you have to manage them, not be, to be overrun and not be killed outright. But they can really harass people. Mm-hmm. So they were, I think, one of the reasons why I managed to shake you a little bit uh, besides the, the the table in itself but of course the real big winners was of course that i had two squads of snipers yes yeah, snipers and are you for the steel guard are just deadly they yeah. are so annoying to play against yep and you did get in uh, some really good shots i, mm-hmm. I mean the, the the absolute worst thing that yeah, happens yeah, yeah. For, for me uh, from a dice point of view mm-hmm. <laughs> was when your steel guard snipers just completely yeah. they with the first shot they made yeah. they completely crippled and removed the main the main gun from my uh, tengu yeah so <laughs> it was such a beautiful thing you know i just move out in front of the tengu with my two snipers so it's two r- your two rail guns against my two sniper rifles and i shoot i hit i do critical hit i do main weapon destroy okay that it's is of course uh, yeah so beautiful so that was uh, just so stupid in a way. yeah uh, so yeah that and that of course i couldn't really do anything about no. that the, the thing i did try was uh, to have my i did have my command squad yeah. in the vicinity so i had yeah. this kind of idea of going in and try to repair it yeah but then i made one really really fatal mistake because yep. you had your other sniper team yep. in a way, and I knew they were there, yep. uh, which was my mistake yep. because I moved up another team yep. uh, and put it in the way, and I forgot to use their smoke grenades, the ninjas. Yep. Yep. So you just had a clean shot right at my yep. command squad. Yeah, and then you could go, well, what should I take out? But I, of course, took out the medic and the mechanic Mm -hmm. which all of a sudden left you with no options to repair your walker yeah and that was such a because it was so so nice you i was just positioning on the roof and it was like i had this beautiful target no i actually i walked down from the roof because to get the target but then i stood there i saw you standing and i was thinking why doesn't he stop me why does he try to do this or hinder me for some reason okay 
I'll take the shot. And they are, of course, expert sniper rifles with the power scope. So yeah. it was like, oh, what a... F and, you know, that was also a good thing, but though. Uh, it gave you some uh, insights into the sniper rifle. If you wanted to... Uh, uh, to be as frank and, and tell the viewers of how you thought about it before and how you realized the sniper rules were. No, no, um, I, I always thought that the sniper for the steel guard specifically, um, but just I always know that they are really good. Just uh, the, the usual thing about the sniper squads is that you get one shot. Mm -hmm. No, no, I was thinking we had a rule uh, discussion because of that. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. you're I thinking about that was, thing. Yeah, yes, yeah, yes. I, 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 and I don't mean to, to, to talk down on you i mean i was thinking just to for the viewers perhaps some others are or listeners are thinking the same way mm -hmm. uh, so but it, but you do it much better with the with the rule questions or perhaps we should ask magnus because he's not talking he's so, just painting yeah so everyone has noticed question? this I'm, I'm listening <laughs> yeah but you should so. get in, in, into this as well so yeah definitely come on What's so it? yeah you should, so, you should take it yeah, with him how does the sniper rifle works work <laughs> How do they work? Yeah, yeah. please you, you do point, all the you rules. Point it you know? at the opponent and you kill stuff. That's the <laughs> Yeah, stupid question, stupid yeah, I, answer. Yeah, I think uh, you should uh, put it a little bit more specific. Now the thing was that we, I was, um, I was lining up two shots with two snipers, mm -hmm. and then I, I was having it that I had to shoot. I have to before I roll my die. When I pick my targets, I have to say this sniper is shooting at the medic. This sniper is shooting at the mechanic. I remember there being some discussion about that, and I think because that's the most sort of most restricted way of playing it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's also how I play it. I don't play snipers too often, but it happens. And that's also how I play them. But I have to, to specify first exactly. Like this guy is shooting at that guy. Mm -hmm. and then roll, roll the dice. And in your case, when you have two snipers in the same unit, you have to specify them both. I remember there being a discussion, but I can't actually remember if there was an official answer like uh, from Olivier stating specifically how this works. Well, we actually, when this came up in the game, we had this kind of back and forth for a while and then we actually looked it up in the rule book and it turns out that the rule book was quite clear yeah. <laughs> uh, in this case. So, <laughs> and it says... The what? correct answer, Janus? Yeah, no, you go for it. You go no. for it. Oh, why should I say everything in this episode? <laughs> this is Luda, war journalist, especially yes, exactly. because we're Luda only talking. Nah, sorry. Uh, no, basically, the viewers will not be wanting uh, another paint challenge, but because you two clam up like a <laughs> Okay, no, but actually, it's, 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 it was the way I, 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 I interpret it. So you have to pick the, every target before you roll the die. Right. So you can't just shoot. If I shoot, if I say I take two sniper rifles, I shoot at your squad over there, I just roll two dice and I hit both, then you as a target can choose what happens. Yeah, then you it. forego that yeah. rule that the attacker can choose. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, and and uh, that's the thing with, okay, we know now that the Japanese, the Ninja uh, snipers will have two snipers and uh, 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 spotter as well. Yes. So they are going to be heck of a hard and component. of course you have uh, Yukiko the hero which yeah. uh, will be able to join them I think yeah. and that's very apropos because she is one of the new uh, releases if we're going back to that <laughs> if yes, we try yes, to yes. go to the to the actual news also yeah. uh, Yukiko both the resin model kit and the premium version uh, mm. are available at Dust Game Sweet. and of course that's not everything that's been released you also have the big big release with battle for babylon yeah and, uh, yeah Have it's a, it's it's a yeah if you mm. want to see more about the things in that wave and what we think about them mm -hmm. check out last episode because yeah. we did a thorough look at everything in yeah that. i mean the unboxing of the babylon is so last month you know? <laughs> i don't know people doing that now and did it last week and so it's, it's yeah so, so wait <laughs> yeah we're such dust hipsters yeah we're not going to be allowed into uh, the, uh, the in Poland anymore. No. <laughs> <laughs> they would restrict us. Nah, sorry. Uh, a little bit of friendly banter over there. It was just nice to be able to be first sometime. Um, well, uh, apart from that, though, yeah. do, you, do you have more uh, new releases that you want to talk about? And that was basically the the big thing. So the, mm -hmm. the thing that was new for me is that I got uh, a little shipment 
with the phaser cannon for the super pushing. So I had the mm. yeah, I had the kit. It's uh, just waiting for me to build it. So now I got the weapon modifier, the weapon conversion kit as well. And uh, I, I did build um, for the old one uh, just with the original turret. Uh, mm. But you can swap that one, of course, for the bulldog or six shooter turrets as well. Mm. So I wanted another one to modify. Mm. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that's uh, that's a nice one. <laughs> definitely, definitely. Uh, do you have any, any conversions going on over there, Magnus? Or... Uh, well, um, if we go back again to the Hobbit time Yeah, part, I think yeah. it's going to be um, that kind of a weird episode this time. Yeah, yes. probably. Uh, well, I have been doing some hobby stuff actually during the last month. Yeah. Um, and you, you showed us some, uh, some secret pictures. <laughs> yeah, uh, I went all the way up to Mutz for a weekend, spending yeah. time building terrain. So that was really good to get that project going a bit more. Uh, now with everything happening in the world with the Corona stuff, I don't know when we will be able to continue that work. We'll have to wait and see a bit. Uh, but still, um, yeah, that was a really good weekend. Mm -hmm. Sounds nice. Yeah. I've also, uh, again, also with Mats, I played uh, some board game, played uh, Memoir 44. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, which is a yeah, cool game. Mm -hmm. I like yeah. that system. Um, also played some other board games, and again I mentioned last episode my neighbor. Yeah, that I got yes. to, to do some gaming with, and uh, he invited me to come and play a World War Two miniatures game called Chain of Command. Oh yeah, you, you showed some pictures. Uh, yeah, a while uh, back, and I had this is something never I'll... ever heard of that game before. Yeah, same for me. It's just and it's it was, completely new. It was interesting and very very different. I have never played anything like it oh in what way like in in so many ways uh <laughs> i don't know where to begin even it's it's a fairly detailed game you know where you have you have some charts and you can do a lot of cool stuff it's, it's sort of focused on the on the lower ranking officers if you know what i mean you I don't see. really have super powerful guys but you do okay. have a bunch of like sergeants or whatever mm -hmm. depending on army uh, and they can do some really cool stuff, so you have to kind of... It's a sort of resource management in that aspect, that you oh. have to sort of decide when to use their command points and... Oh, okay, so that, that kind of explains the name then. Yeah. When so, it's, it's, yeah, so that was really interesting. And just the setup of the game was also super interesting, where you had markers and you sort of played kind of a mini game first hmm. to decide exactly where your deployment <laughs> zones would be what kind of attack oh. vectors you would get hmm. okay so i move my little token over here which means i will lock down your token over there so you can't move that okay oh, so right. i know you will not be coming from here okay that's nice oh, oh wait you're flanking me so i have to to do you know kind of some some counter move to get these tokens in the right place. And when everything is sort of locked down, you have your, your vectors in a very specific way. It's, it's difficult to explain when you don't have it in front of you, but uh, that was really interesting to me. Maybe because, you know, I, I kind of work with sort of geometry stuff. Mm. So you have to think about lines and... and uh, and pre-measurements and stuff yes, like sort that. Of, yes. Sort of <laughs> geometry yeah. exercising. <laughs> yeah. Which was, so that was very interesting to me. Um, very cool. And then the actual game begins and you, you have possibility to choose where to deploy stuff and where to, to, to put your leaders. They can join different units and stuff. And the, I mean, the game was also funny in many ways. Uh, in this game, I played uh, the Soviets uh, against Germans. Good choice. Good choice. Yeah. And uh, I had a big tank. I had a KV-2 tank, which Ooh. is a sort of oddball tank, but one of my favorites. Um, but the problem was it wasn't running from the beginning. So oh. I had my guys working on it, trying to <laughs> get it going. <laughs> That's nice. Yes. And oh, if, I love that. if I could get it going, I would mm. probably win and get the sort of upper hand. But <laughs> first, I wanted to get the weapon. I needed to get the weapons going so mm. I could at least fire with it. Yeah. And, and second stage was to get the engines running to be able to actually move it somewhere. Yeah. And... Uh, my opponent there, my neighbor, he started with a Panzer III, 
and and played pretty aggressively mm -hmm. so i thought okay i'm not gonna make it i'm running out of time here because i didn't succeed to, to get my thing going there yeah. but then my heroes the uh, the anti-tank rifle guys they arrived and they put one shot <laughs> and hitting exactly square, destroying the cannon on the Panzer III. Ooh. What does that remind us of? <laughs> <laughs> and then second shot, immobilized. Yay. So <laughs> these two guys with the rifles, they just, you know, completely won the day, basically. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, right. And we didn't know we had a theme here. <laughs> <laughs> but on the other hand, if we go back to, to that yes. match that we had, there was another where you also, I mean, you, you hit a lot of critical hits. I think it was three in total or something. Yeah. Um, because they, I, I definitely remember uh, another time when you hit um, one of my walkers and you got in a critical hit and it caught fire. Yeah, yeah. And you were just so smug about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And in my next activation, I just uh, activated the uh, cadet squad that was right beside yeah. them and repaired it and removed the fire. Yeah, well. <laughs> so. <laughs> Let's not talk about that. That's an <laughs> ugly moment, you know. Not important. Uh, yeah, no, 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 not important. Of not course, important. yes. But it, it's always nice when you um, when you get that uh, critical hit. It's just I, I love that little extra. I know it. Some people don't like it. Some think it's complicated things. Some think it slows the game down. But I'm I'm very much for the. Uh, the, that critical hit uh, table, I think it adds just that little special flavor, and uh, it can be really funny. Yeah, actually, yeah, and, and um, it happens in war. I mean, things do happen that people don't expect. So I always think that some sort of randomness is uh, is a good thing. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why I don't mind playing some sort of strategy game, if you want to call us that, uh, with dice, because I feel like there should always be some interesting uh, random events, actually. Yeah, so that, that was one of the things that you told earlier today, because we actually had another match of Scythe um, earlier to this day. I don't so, remember yeah. that. I don't, I don't remember that. I know we have two uh, Scythe games beforehand, you and I, uh, and which have been very fun. Uh, did we play something today? I, I don't... I have no... I can't recollect. Uh. Oh, was that maybe because you lost this time? Uh. Do you remember this, Magnus? I, I, I don't remember we playing anything before this podcast. Did you? No. Um, I don't know. Uh, I, I, no, I can't really recall. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, the point I was trying to make was that that is a strategy game that has a very low amount of random mm. uh, function, at least during gameplay. It's a, yeah. quite random at in setup in a few ways, yeah, though. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, definitely. But that, that's uh, kind of the, the, other, the other side of that coin, so definitely. to speak. Uh, so, uh, yeah, yeah. do you have more hobby stuff to yeah, talk about? Yeah, I have tons yeah. of hobby stuff, actually. Oh, yeah, right, so yeah, sure. You, you cool, see? because we are getting more and more questions. Ah, okay, good, 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 good. Uh, but so uh, keep going. Yeah, good. Well, uh, the thing is, uh, the, the big thing for me, actually, uh, in all aspects, the biggest thing, because Magnus was allowed to do this uh, a few shows back, I've also been uh, hobbying in one-to-one -one scale now. Oh, uh, yeah. Finally, I got the new fan in my kitchen up on the wall. Yeah, it's good you, you have at least one fan. Yeah. So. <laughs> I cling to the one I have, even if I have to buy them and put them on the wall. <laughs> I actually, that's the best way to have your fans mounted on the wall. Uh, just, just a quick one out there to everyone. Just, uh, just in general. Any just, just in general. Yeah, if okay. you want, if you want to, if you have a fan, put it on the wall, mount it. Then you can always be next to it and close to it and know where it is and stuff like that. It's so much easier to clean also. Yeah. When, when, you, when you have a fan that runs around and you try to clean it. It's not oh well, and also I've been laying the new kitchen floor, which is very very fun for me. Uh, I'm very very happy with this. So we will probably I will in ten years or so when the kitchen is done, uh, I will probably invite you to do a podcast from my kitchen <laughs> as well. But that's just another story. Um, well, we always already talked about Carl and steel guards and uh, um, well. I, 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 could, I can add, though, that I still haven't got a grip on that platoon they got. Uh, oh, yeah. Even though I've tried a few times now to play it. But uh, it's uh, it's like the thing I want to hit with my baton so far, mm -hmm. either 
it's uh, if I shoot on it beforehand, either that walker can't hit it, or that walker kills it off almost. So when oh, yeah. when, when Carl and the guys arrive, uh, they like, uh, well, we can always stamp on the mud uh, that's yeah. left, or <laughs> see, smoking boots, or something like that. So so, but but it, I'm I'm thinking this is something for me to learn and how to master more mm -hmm. uh, precise. Um, so um, uh, well, um, then we I had talked about it before, so I, I just thought that. I could perhaps show you. That could also be some show and tell. But I actually, I think the I'm not. I'm haven't done the water effects yet. But this is for uh, a board I'm doing. So this is like a little forest river. Yeah. I was talking about that Swedish uh, uh, forest. Uh, a kind of springtime uh, in a way with the spring floods and yeah. such, maybe. Yeah. Perhaps up or yeah. Just uh, mythical stuff like that. And also, I've talked about the. Uh, the those uh, the gwe trees you know the plastic ones oh yeah they the, they have yeah. some new ones yeah. yeah i saw that you had used them for some things yeah and i have showed you guys but i haven't showed the other ones so i was thinking well i can always just bring one of them and then mm -hmm. uh, i don't know if it gives anyone anything but uh, we can always just <laughs> well i, I and i've made them removable and as perhaps it's bad that i have removed the uh, uh, the 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 roots so the these are not standing in water some people might just feel like that that is a bad thing i just see here how did i <laughs> which way it's, it's yeah there. it it usually is so much easier yeah well now i know two roots one root so there you go there so you, you go. can remove okay. it and it can stand it's one square mm -hmm. uh, i did a mistake with that one <clears throat> because i did it in a little bit too big square so i have to uh, had to cut off something with this oh yeah and then reflock it but i think it it works and uh well i also actually you know I was <laughs> but that's talking, not all no, that's all <laughs> uh, i painted some other stuff as well Wait, and i uh, sorry more. <laughs> yeah that's more and I, I i these are not good painted but i feel like since i might not meet mats in a while mm -hmm. and i was talking uh, so vividly about his parts of stuff that he produced in my uh, then I can perhaps show uh, the yeah. little grave sign there the perhaps the gold from Kelly's heroes I don't know <laughs> oh yeah uh, go, and then he has been started making those um, objective markers yeah the numbered some, ones yeah. yeah so and they were supposed to be at Nordic I think mm. uh, I don't know what, and, and perhaps might still be because let, let's try to clear that one up if it's not jumping ahead too much. Uh, the Nordic is only postponed, not exactly. cancelled. Yeah, Dust Nordic is postponed, it's yeah. not cancelled. Uh, and that, that is a very important distinction, I think. We, we are planning to have a Dust Nordic tournament this year. We don't know when yet. And uh, well, we just still... Of course, we have to work things out with the venue. Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, but we have to kind of wait out the, the current situation, of yeah, course. Yeah. So, yeah, we'll, we'll just have to uh, uh, keep our fingers crossed and see where we end up, basically. Yeah. Great. Mm -hmm. uh, because uh, I, I, I really look forward to playing it. So I'm, yeah. I'm just glad you... And panicked and cancel everything, and especially no, when no, we've no. seen the pictures of Magnus <laughs> gaming table over there, we we want to uh, we wanted to uh, get that in 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 the real real flesh, so to speak. Yes, and, yeah, absolutely. Uh, but how have you done with the uh, the figures? Can we? Can I? Can yeah, I what, the what the, cur the kind of current uh, state yeah. of it. Uh, yeah. So I kind of oh. almost finished with the base code. Yeah, I feel definitely. Uh, I've, I, I, the the, the, the big thing I'm having a trouble with, uh, mm -hmm. actually, uh, is this annoying bottle. Uh, I'm, I've uh, started to take my uh, my GW paints. The mm -hmm. normal uh, this is this is a contrast one, so I'm not going to oh, pour yeah, this over. The but the yeah. but the uh, the normal kind of layer and base mm -hmm. coats and, and such. I. I at, not always, but I usually do some decanting, put them over in these types of bottles with uh, a little bit of a medium to make them a little bit thinner, so yep, you don't yep. need as much water and such. The problem with this specific one is I can't get the freaking lid off. I just <laughs> twist it and nothing happens. Ah, <laughs> so it's then really, we have to really help annoying. Each other just be, be careful so you just mm. don't spill it all over you. <laughs> so I think... Uh, it's probably just some paint that it's got stuck in the threads or something, but mm -hmm. yeah. You feeling it? Oh, I heard it. I heard it. Yep. Pop goes Magnus <clears throat> and his body. Oh, geez. <laughs> it's still. Mm -hmm. It's 
It's going to squirt all over you, your face here. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm glad I'm not looking. Squeeze this one, but it's really, really stuck. Yep. So maybe that one is a lost cause, actually. <laughs> I'm still not giving away. Yeah. <laughs> this this bottle might be a lost cause. So. Uh, well, just because it would uh, really humor me if I managed. Please give it to me. That yeah, sure, you give it a try. Yeah, I know I won't. But I'm, I'm the... So let's see how far you come then no, in I, the meantime. I just had some uh, whites and then I wash it also with black over it. Yeah. Because for some reason I feel that's better way for me to see the details. Yeah, so definitely. I, so uh, that definitely it. helps when you're going in to do that. And uh, I know from painting Laura myself that she has a lot of very intricate details around the armor. Yeah. It's a, it's a really lovely miniature. So, yeah, this is actually, yeah, I just thought I could perhaps bend in some air in it and perhaps the vacuum or something, whatever held it. Uh, could. Yeah. But then as soon as you start twisting it now, you start to get moist on your hands and it would just yeah. slip. So, it's well, whatever. Very, very strange. Mm, so, yeah. Magnus, how are you doing? Well, uh, I'm, I haven't gone that far because I'm doing all these five guys in one batch, basically. <laughs> so I've done the skin tone and I'm now doing the uniform. Trying to get the big areas done here, so uh, yeah. yeah. That's also something I knew. Know some good painter was telling me you know, way back that you should uh, paint your minis like you were dressing up. Yeah, I mean, from like the, the inside out in out. a way. Yeah. yeah. So I I rarely do that though. I, yeah. I just doodle away with whatever. <laughs> I guess it depends fancy, on. But, but I, I mean, everyone has their own way of painting, but no. with, with models like these, I tend to like almost always start with the skin tone because mm -hmm. then I get much better feel of, of the miniature as a whole. I can't really describe it, but that, that's how I do it. Yeah, of course, it does a lot to just help differentiate and make it, uh, make it pop a little bit, make it a little bit more alive in a sense. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, we should talk a little bit more also about the about the newest releases, uh, besides Yukiko. Yeah, definitely. I do have more hobby time. Though. Yeah, but, so, we, but, but then break we, it could, up, break we it could no, no, yeah, break it up. So, so. Uh, there's also been the Luftwaffe uh, support weapons uh, mm -hmm. has been released in a in the model kit version, uh, which is really cool. That's the newest thing that uh, that got up very very recently, and uh, this is very interesting because there's some stuff uh, I feel in here that hasn't really been available before. Uh, with the uh, we got the yeah the 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 mortar the observer squad the laser the airdrop laser gun and the airdropped uh, missile uh, and I think cool the stuff. yeah the, there's some really cool stuff and get all these four in one box is uh, really really cool definitely definitely yes yeah, so, so that one and also uh, if we're talking about unassembled models we got uh, the the kind of Jagdluther, Jagdloki, and Jagdvotan uh, model kit box. Yeah. And that is also a really cool thing just to get the all the three different variants in one box, and spe especially for the Jagdvotan, which was also one of those things that were released back when the Kickstarter, Kickstarter was on, yeah. and then uh, with all the kerfuffle that happened yeah. around that, it's been a little bit of a difficult thing to get a hold of. Definitely, definitely. So I'm, I'm, I'm all for that, and that's a very, very interesting little box over there to do to get one's hands on, because like... Mm, it it is one of there. the big, just classic dust models, the Jagdluther. Oh yeah, it is. Uh, I still have some hard time using it, but I, I still... I still enjoy it, and I still like the shape of it, you know, so... Yeah. And of course, the thing I, that I we, was... Yeah, uh, I'm gonna... Yeah. I interrupt with this quick response from Roger. He says that it's no problem because the longer it takes for the next Nordic Championship to happen, the longer he will be the champion. <laughs> <laughs> that is, of course, true. Uh, that, that, well, and it's the same kind of logic. I am still the reigning... Uh, Eastern European champion because yeah. there hasn't been an Eastern European championship since I won a few years back. Yeah. So. so guys, you better get on that, okay? Yes. You know, that's getting annoying. And but that's just so typical, Roger. He's such a he always thinks forever. 
about everyone else, not himself. <laughs> He's just that sharing kind of guy. So uh, I, I'm not at all surprised that he, he, he gets he puts that uh, comment over there. So, yeah, sorry. definitely. Yeah. But uh, yeah, just to get serious for a moment, I mean, there, there's uh, a lot of stuff going on. Uh, if we're talking about tournament scenes, there's a lot of stuff oh, yeah. getting getting cancelled, and it is a hard time. Oh yeah. Uh, so that is kind of one of the reasons that we wanted to do this kind of special thing to make mm. uh, to make it a bit a little bit more fun. Yeah. Uh, both for us and for uh, you, our listeners and viewers. Yeah, we're talking about this today. Yeah, this, exactly. This live show. Exactly. Yeah. This this live show and just getting getting the paints out and doing stuff. Uh, yeah, and we have uh, been talking about it for quite some time, and now yeah, it just it, seemed like. Yeah. Like a really good time to try to do it. Exactly, and it's a learning process. So <laughs> it's going to probably, if we if we keep do this, keeping this, it probably will improve over time. And we have been talking about uh, live streaming a few games as well, mm -hmm. and we maybe then start with some lower points costs uh, just to get going. Yeah, and definitely. We'll, yeah, we'll we'll see what happens with mm -hmm. that. But uh, one of the things that I do see is just how people get uh, involved in the mm -hmm. hobby. In lots of different other ways other than just going out and play and if it is painting their figures if it is constructing terrain uh, if it is just uh, 3d printing if it is supporting their local game store by buying stuff from them online and stuff like that i mean there's a lot of things you can do even if you are a, a bit confined. <laughs> I mean. Definitely. Uh, and it's so so good to see all that. And I actually want to shout out also here so we don't forget about it. I think you're going to get to it a little bit later. But I would just like to add something about it. That, that um, <laughs> although... <laughs> I have some reservations as well. Oh. I, I, lo I love the uh, solo game they put out on uh, on oh, um, yeah, the Paradise Lost. Yeah. Yes. yes. But given the cows, the dazzling speed, I was like, <laughs> oh yeah, well, I, 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 I fear a cow stampede all day long. So mm -hmm. I, I'm guessing uh, it's something like that that uh, makes it logical. Uh, and of course, it's always fun because you can always use your cows as well as you, from. I mean, from when they released all those cows in uh, uh, Operation yeah, which one? Um, Operation Kill. No, not Achilles. Uh, what, what was you, it? you usually have that uh, yeah. <laughs> on top. Magnus. Magnus. Yeah, I'm thinking. I think. It was one of the of the very last ones. Yeah, it wasn't was... Cerberus or no? No, Cerberus was earlier. I th may maybe Achilles or um, uh, was it Hades? Hey, no, because no. That's, that one is on okay. the ground, right? Uh, no, it's, it's probably Achilles. It's probably Achilles. Yeah, it could, could be. Mm. Uh, is it? It's a too extreme for me to go. The first one of print, prints the right answer on the on YouTube right now. The one that prints it first in the commentary wins a prize. <laughs> is, is that okay? Are you sponsoring I mean, it? <laughs> Nah, I'm thinking about the goodie bag we have in, 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 in your hobby. Oh, so, so you are in a way. Then. Yeah, well, okay. So if, if all mine is yours, then I'm totally down with it. But uh, that's just, uh, that was just a thought I had. <laughs> yeah, of oh. course. Okay, so, uh, so, yeah, sure. But let's go over and talk uh, a little bit more then uh, about... Uh, the questions that we've got in, because we have got a few questions, not only before the show, as usual, but we I think we got some questions uh, oh, yeah, live have. on the stream as well. But let's go through our, our pre-prepared questions, so okay. to speak, first time. I'm still not done yeah. with my hobby time, though. So no, I'm, okay, I'm so let's get... Yeah, sure, so I'm, I'm just hassling you, we, so we can do it any way you want it. You don't know? hassle the Let's hobby. do a couple of questions. Yeah, yeah sure. Okay. okay. Yeah, so we had the one from, I think, Andrew Begley. I'm not I'm not one of yeah. sure about yeah. all these names here, but, but uh, from Andrew anyway. Yeah. Uh, how many dog units do you really need for the USMC? And... How do you defeat them if you play against them? How many do you need? All of them. Well, <laughs> I'm thinking about the uh, guy who, who was planning to build to build an army with like twelve, mm -hmm. something like that. So, yeah, th that I was mean, you, uh, Misha. You are free to build your army any way you want, uh, but there for me there would be two things. First, I mean the dogs are a really good unit. They are. Very good. They, they do what they do in a very specialized but very yeah efficient way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
definitely. Uh, but the second part, if I'm building an army, uh, generally I don't like spam armies, sort of as in general. Yeah. Meaning the exact same unit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Roger, cover your ears right now. You, you don't <laughs> want to listen to him. No, right but now. I mean, there are different armies that can be fun to play if they have at least some variations. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are obviously a bunch of different heavy uh, sort of... All, uh, probably you could call them spam armies, you know, they have a lot of unit, units, uh, mostly this this is in regards to infantry units, I mean you have the Endak, you have the Spetsnaz, yeah. uh, you have a couple of IGN versions, and so on. Uh, but for me at least, as long as you don't use the exact same unit over and over and over again, I'm pretty much okay with it. I, I'm, I don't know. I would probably for myself put a cap on two, maybe three of the same units, but beyond that it, it gets boring for me. So it doesn't really matter how much I like a unit, uh, I will probably never ever play with more than three and, and very rarely more mm. than two. So. But yeah, that's, uh, that's same here. Uh, unfortunately, there are some armies, like if you play like the guard units and you want to play a guard uh, army, you only have two types of infantry to choose from, mm. so then it tends to be, and since the uh, assault squad is so much better than the anti-tank, even though the anti-tank is super, uh, uh, the assault squad is just so much better, I have a tendency to have a few. Uh, but for this question, I would definitely go with two dogs, because uh, the one will be hit, uh, one will be taken out. Um, I had some real problems with the dogs from um, when the Lars was playing my frogs, actually. Mm. Uh, and he got one of the dogs inside of my, in my perimeter and uh, attacked me with it. Well, actually, he could attack with both of them. But the one, one of them, well, he had some messy dice rolls. And yeah. Yeah. But, but... Um, and, and, and basically it depends on very much what, what of course your you are playing or what type of uh, uh, type of toy type of units you have to to combat the the dogs uh, it's of course interesting to go with uh, but if you play steel guards you just take one of your cheaper squads like an assault squad or something and you just walk up to them and when they bite uh, whatever they do uh, the you, you you square up with another steel guard squad and just hammer away because then they die uh it's very hard to survive any well it's the only the sniper squad that you survive if you're a dog a dog squadron but then if you have two snipers in in the near you shoot the two dogs and then the other ones with their little uh, shotguns they are of course a harassment but the, you, you take them out sooner or later so uh, um, and i will also say just use walkers that's, yeah. the, that's the easiest way to deal with them because they don't really have anything to put up against the walker. No, definitely. I mean, that, that's one of the things that uh, people might forget is that, yes, the, the, the dogs themselves are very devastating if they get in, uh, in close combat and do stun, but they only have that uh, weapon line and those special skills against other infantry. Yep, so true, so yeah. true. So uh, I would say use walkers or other vehicles against yeah. them. Uh, that is probably the easiest way to deal with them. Definitely. Yeah, and they are, they are also only that efficient, you know, as efficient as they are when they are at full strength. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. every man or dog that they lose will make them, well, a lot less threatening. Yeah, and especially so. uh, nowadays when you actually have to choose when you lose the health point from the hit from the herd, what is lost if it's a if it's a one of the dogs or one of the soldiers, because earlier uh, in I. Th I think they added this change in the Dust 1947 mm, rules, yeah, yeah. because earlier in the second edition rules, uh, for the support weapons you didn't actually choose, so you could have just one one uh, hit point left, and you can yeah. still choose if it's a dog bite attack you want to do, or if it's a shotgun attack, yeah. which was a bit strange, <laughs> but that's how the rules were back then. Yeah. So uh, that's so true and so good that they did that change because that it made it all, ah, it made it all better. Actually. Yeah, definitely, so. definitely. Uh, cool. So um, 
Going to the next question. Uh, oh, it's from you. Bill Hegg. Yeah. And mm-hmm. he's asking, uh, Diver USMC or Diver Desert Scorpions? Uh, which one does it better? Yeah, like we said in the pre-show, nobody does it better. <laughs> well, it, yeah, we're working on it. We're yeah, exactly. It. Well, I, w- I would say the USMC has so many awesome heroes. Uh, other anyway. Way, so yeah, anyway, exactly. So I would say Desert Scorpions because uh, yeah, they they are just uh, they they need they need diver more than the USMC. I would say. Yeah, it, it depends on how you look at it, because I mean, in the USMC, divers got like more. Um, he can choose from more different ways to be played. I mean, you can mm-hmm. you can put him in a lot of different units and use him in in interesting ways. Yeah, uh, of course, there are different units in in the Desert Scorpions as well. But as you say, the the Scorpions don't have that many heroes, mm-hmm. so. In regards of how much he would like buff the rest of the army, I would probably also go with the scorpions. Mm. Like compared to how much better the army will be with or without him. Yeah. But then again, you don't have to play him. Um, He's a good hero, but there are other other good heroes as well. So it Mm -hmm. all depends on how many points you're playing and and what play style you have, basically. So, um, yeah. Well, yeah, and I wouldn't. Want, I don't want to actually jump ahead to the next question, but but there, uh, we perhaps a few of them out there already knows that. Well, I don't. Uh, I don't play uh, USMC, mm-hmm. so for me it's quite easy. But but for me also, I feel like the other heroes, uh, like Sean and like Marek and stuff like that, are more uh, the the heroes that I want to play when I play Desert Scorpion. So so I. He is he's not a guy I go to uh, when I when I want to play as a scorpion. I actually forego uh, him by from from the beginning actually. That so. is an interesting point because they they flavor wise uh, or yeah. rather how how the army feels to play. The USMC feels much more like a regular Diver army, army. <laughs> uh, while the uh, the Desert Scorpions is much more that ragtag bunch of. Uh, action hero the expendables kind of yeah kind of thing that's that's true mm. so so it's it kind of depends there yeah that's an interesting thing uh, it, it feels much more it's much more it feels uh, unique uh, uh, rather than the usmc which yeah. feels a, a little bit more specific uh, for that army style yeah. so in that way it depends on how you want to to play it then yeah uh, i believe so i believe so yeah, right. So maybe some more hobby time stuff from yeah, you. Did, yeah, did you have anything else? I yeah. guess you do. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> uh, I, I'd like to, it's, um, well, one can argue how much hobby related this is, but I feel still like I want to give a shout out with this uh, to the uh, to, to the audience. I've been watching two things that have been inspiring me when it comes to color and building and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, first off, I think I uh, said this last show, but just to uh, remind people, there are two different shows, at least in Sweden, which you can get hold of, that is a Lego Masters show. Ooh. Uh, one is Lego Masters Australia, and one is Lego Masters Great Britain. Uh, I feel the Australian one is way better than the British one. Oh. So if you just go in for one of them, I just want to have a, a peep. Uh, or perhaps you should do the British one before the Australian one. But there's something more with the presenter and the, uh, the judge and stuff like that. It just, yeah, and the concept of it, it seems like more of an interesting competition actually also. Um, but uh, it's very inspiring to see them put together the bricks and it gives you some thoughts on on colors and how to build gaming boards actually also if you look a little bit ah well mm-hmm. if you're in, let yourself getting inspired but one of the things that i also tipped you guys on uh, is the wonderful show 
Great Modeling Railway Challenge. Yeah, we did. We watched an episode of that while you were prepping for our match when we were at your place. Yeah. Uh, oh, that was so much fun just to see both the kind of reality show kind of standard stuff, mm-hmm. but uh, from a from a hobby nerd perspective, just see all the different uh, techniques they use and yeah. just get that inspiration. That's uh, that was fantastic. Yeah, because what they do is actually then that they they have like fifteen teams who have. Five Five semifinals and yeah. uh, three teams compete every time and they get three days to complete a, a train set with a di- diorama and uh, the best diorama wins and is, uh, is it uh, i only saw that one uh, episode so far but it, mm-hmm. it's always that they have some specific theme that yeah. they are going to uh, to kind of match yeah and they do it uh, with various skill sets and uh, uh, i actually started to get a little bit cocky i'm not i did only do some hobby modeling on train stuff uh, with merklin when i was like uh well eight nine and stuff and it was mm-hmm. just uh, basically because my dad wanted me to do it uh but uh uh, and it, it was fun, but but I wasn't ready then to 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 go into the train hobby set uh, or the modeling thing. But that, mm-hmm. um, but they do. Well, I was now I'm drifting off topic a little bit. But, but, but what I felt is that I would love to have seen three or five people from the the hobby game, mm-hmm. like uh, gamers, oh, compete yeah. in this one against these guys. They are very clever and so they have a lot of tips for you out there building your own terrain or your own first hobby table. You could get some serious experience, uh, some inspiration from mm-hmm. these uh, the series. Um, and it's so interesting, you know, how they use different type of water effects um, amongst others. Um, I'm, I'm so interested in trying to do what they do in one of the uh, the episodes that they have real water on, on the table. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but apparently it, it doesn't look real on, on when you do a scale water, but it would be just so interesting to have real water on your... Yeah, that, that's one of the things that I've, I've, uh, I'm also kind of a bit of a film buff. So mm. I, I watch a lot of movies and I watch the documentaries, uh, yeah. listen to uh, those uh, commentated tracks on movies. And that's one of the things I've heard as well, that the problem with doing... Uh, scale models yeah. with water involved is that uh, water droplets are always the same size. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so if you do a very small little thing in water and the, just the splashes and such is yes everything looks completely wrong. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so that's uh, ah, yeah. If yeah. you know what to look for, it's very very obvious. Uh, so that's that's interesting, but that's a very very good tip because that's just to get that, like you said, that inspiration. Yeah, and uh, also I just uh, to round off my hobby time at least, I just like to uh, talk a little bit that I'm having the Lexa Skype game blues actually at the oh, moment. Oh yeah, because I've tried to get some Skype games going, and for some reason it 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 never materialized. Uh, yesterday it was actually my my fault and i have already apologized to lorna to that it didn't get to to a game uh, i had, i had a bad real bad episode yesterday with the with the well well my heart problem actually yeah. so so we don't need to go there too much but but i have a condition so uh well the thing is uh but then also the other game i was planning was uh, well the my my opponent needed to go back to work because there was an emergency due to the CV crisis. So of course there was no, there's not, not surprised that they, those these those two games didn't happen. But I'm, I'm really trying to fly the the flag now for uh, playing Skype games. I mean, yeah, sure. If, if you can't leave your house, then why not play a game? I mean, <laughs> absolutely. Um, yeah, sure. How hard can it be? And um, famous last words. <laughs> yeah, no, I know. I created a game um, back home. I put some. Uh, uh, I, I enumerate from one to twelve and oh yeah, yeah. A to I, mm-hmm. and uh, so you have that enumerated grid in a way, so yeah. you get the coordinates for each uh, for each square. Yeah, and you've been so kind to leave the. Of course, you, we have it on the Dust Viking forum, but not many go there, unfortunately. But you'd also have it on the Dust Nordic uh, site. You can go and get those very good scenarios for playing on. Um, uh, in this cir- circumstances, I yeah. think at least mm-hmm. uh, they are balanced. They are they are good scenarios. So mm-hmm. uh, 
Well, yeah. Uh, so I just like to champion that a little bit and hope people are started playing Skype games now. Yeah. And uh, please hook me up if only my physical form is okay. I would love to play everyone from uh, all around the world. Uh, of course, the time schedule seems to be some problems also. <laughs> that that but, is uh, one of the things. I mean, one of the things is that uh, for as opposed to a lot of other countries, I mean, we still have to go to work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, Sweden ain't locked down. We we are handling this in a different kind of way. And, uh, yeah. So far it works. So uh, yeah. It, so far yeah. it's a sort of I don't know what to call it really. It's sort of a semi lockdown. Yeah. A lot of people still go to work and and then live sort of a normal life. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's many not people are work are working from home, and doing yes. a lot more work from, <laughs> including actually me because yeah. I I'm not always outside doing measurement stuff I'm, I'm also doing a lot of computer work and and i have been able to do that just sitting either at my home or yeah that's good uh, at the company sort of office because i mean i work as a consultant so we have our office but nobody's hardly ever there so usually i can sit there almost completely by myself all day if needed nice so. Yeah, and for me, uh, I work mostly with uh, with interviews where people go home to people and do interviews in their home, and of course that is <laughs> a little bit hard right now. So, uh, mm-hmm. and they're also span our interviews are also spanning the whole of Europe. So it's like uh, every country needs to be there to be able to do these interviews. So. And we uh, have um, we have actually Bill Hegg with us uh, watching, ah. and uh, he posts here that he w- has a has an online game coming up soon. Oh, so. good! Ooh, re- really cool. Mm-hmm. And we we, d- we do need. To, I think uh, if, when you do have those games, I mean, uh, share pictures, share screenshots, share yes. battle reports. I mean, uh, please. Yeah, definitely. We want to see everyone's. Uh, just different solutions on how to do it yeah. and just uh, how does it work for everyone because it's uh, it's fantastic to see the ingenuity that people just get up to yeah definitely uh, i'm so super interested to see and hear what people are are getting up to i mean it's uh, it's it helps so much to to see other gamers uh, paint and play and stuff like that because then you know it's it's a bit of reality that uh, normality. I was saying, sorry, yeah. normality that is, comes to visit you. So, well, yeah, uh, go, go, go. Absolutely. So, next question. Next question is from uh, McKay and Lynn Jeffrey. Uh, which faction or block do you play most or least, and why? Well, that's easy uh, for me, at least. I mean, uh, most you probably know Axis. Uh, uh, but it's also shifted. I mean, uh, if if I look at the complete my complete uh, kind of dust career, it's definitely the Axis. Uh-huh. Uh, r- lately, it's been mostly Mythos mm-hmm. uh, because I really like the models, and uh, I think I'm going to start playing the IJN a whole lot more since I really enjoyed uh, that last game that we had, and I want to do that a lot more. So, uh, and least played block is actually probably the SSU. And mm-hmm. not because of a lack of models, really, because I do have quite a lot. But uh, usually when we play, I tend to gravitate towards the other blocks. Mm-hmm. It's uh, just as simple as that. Uh, well, for me, uh, the least played is obviously Mythos and IGN. I've never ever played them, uh, only against them. Um, and if I would go further and just pick one, it would probably be the mythos that I don't really feel any urge. I've said this before, I don't yeah. feel any urge of, of collecting them, really. I don't mind them. Uh, it's just not for me. Mm-hmm. Um, but I play most, well, currently or lately, it has been quite for some time, I would say, the allies. But I also, I started playing the Axis, so... Right now, I would say my Axis and Allied collection is probably... It's around the same size. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, that's that's it. Yeah. And for me, it's a little bit different, difficult actually to say. I, the favorite one, of course, is the SSU. 
Uh, I played a lot of allied games as well, and I do love that army, especially the infantry too, and the challenges they they pose to you. Uh, uh, you kind of strike me as you've always been the kind of underdog player. <laughs> then when when people said back before in in uh, version two of the game, the SSU was looked on like the 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 kind of odd stepchild of the game yeah. and uh, were, weren't really worth playing and that's when you played them a lot mm -hmm, yeah. and now uh, like that's kind of shifted over towards especially the allied soldier to the rangers so yeah well that is so true and uh, i can't shy away from that uh, i don't mind i don't like playing an army which i Perhaps I don't like the pressure as well of knowing that I now that I play this army, I most likely need to win because they are the best army uh, around. So if I play these guys and don't win, I've actually made a really well. I had a shitty game actually, and then that that is not something that I enjoy. Then you know feeling. that it was your fault. <laughs> yeah, especially it's better to be able to to blame the ga the game in itself or something like that. <laughs> Uh, at least a, a little bit with the fun aspect of it, mm -hmm. but but I mean, and then I'm also like Magnus. Uh, I, I will never play. I, I should never say never, of course, and depending on if I get all of the minis and stuff like that. But most likely, I will never play Mythos. It's not a game. It's not a. I've never been interested in Cthulhu, and I I play it because other people enjoy it, and I enjoy playing Cthulhu games with other people who, who go so madly for it because it's it's fun to play with people who enjoy themselves you know so mm -hmm. but for me it's like yeah all those tentacles and teeth and stuff like that nah doesn't do it um and of course the ign i have still not gotten around to buying any and it will take me years to get the that money going i, I think mm. so uh, at the moment, I think it's going to be a long time for me to play IGN, even though I, but I do would love to play some IGN because I love the minis and I, I so enjoy to be able to play them at least. So uh, both, I'm actually looking forward to playing Roger's Army next time we, I meet him. Perhaps I don't look forward to playing Rod. No, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I do, I do, I do. Uh, Roger is a super guy. So I, I, that's the big combo, actually, having both Roger and the Ninjas in one deal there. It can't get any better, almost. Um, but um, otherwise, the... Uh, hmm. Well, I, I also have like the dream. I think Magnus has, shares this dream as well, that you one day be able to find... A I good, have a dream. Yes, you have a dream, uh, and the dream is uh, to uh, to to play the uh, airborne brigade uh, when we do get enough airborne brigade stuff, so it could be uh, a functional about the army. special service brigade. A uh, special right? service brigade. Sorry, mm. sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 No, no. You're talking about getting together enough models, or just when they get the support and. Uh, yeah, I would like to play them not as Desert Scorpions. I would like to, even though I do want to play them in with the Desert Scorpions as well, because that would be very fun, I think, to find that balance. But I, I would really yeah, love I, to I find... I also still have the hopes of of uh, the, the Special Service Brigade someday being more fleshed out to be uh, an, an actual faction. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Compared to now where there, there's only a couple of units and one hero. So. Mm -hmm. I see, I see. Yeah. All right. So what's our next question? Next question uh, is from Greg, and it's a short one. Goliath or Kauri? And we had uh, in the pre-show when we got through some of these questions, we got just a very singular answer from Roger in the chat room. Yeah, and just yelled out, Kauri! <laughs> so, but I would actually go for, uh, for Goliath, for, for me uh, personally. I mean, I, of course, Kauri is a really cool... Uh, model, she's a cool unit, but I mean, a, f a big flying gorilla. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it, it's hard for for me as spe specifically to uh, to ignore that. Me too. Uh, I it's, it's something with the monkeys, you know, that really turns me on. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. Well, I think it's better than to to go say that you're turned on by the cadets. I think. Or <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. No. <laughs> No, yeah, it's, 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 no, sorry. Yeah, I have to agree with that as well. I think Goliath is. Uh, I mean, because it's so 
a visually striking model. Mm -hmm. I mean, when, when he's on the table, you immediately notice him. Mm -hmm. Sure, Kaori looks cool as well, but it's not you know, that kind of magnet for the eye as, as Goliath is. That, is. that is true. I mean, it's, it's the same for all of the, the ape heroes specifically. I mm. mean, you, you felt that in our last game because I just couldn't resist. I could, didn't bring a pure IJ and I actually had to put in Greg as well. Yeah, <laughs> so. yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> but uh, it, because he's just such a bastard model. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, but that's uh, that's also good. I mean, uh, getting that monkey going up against your steel guards is is, is a fun thing, you know. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah. Well, other than Roger, what do you guys out there <laughs> yeah. prefer in this case? <laughs> yeah, which, which one is the better or the cooler or whatever? <laughs> so uh, next question then. Uh, next question is from uh, our dear friend Brian oh. overseas. Um, there, uh, this is a short version of his question because his question was kind of long, so I, I, I made it a bit shorter. But yes. anyway, uh, there have been many previews of Dust stuff over the years. Some of them, you know, very long time before being released. Uh, and he asks, what unreleased models do you most look forward to? Oh, that's another one that for me personally is quite simple because... Uh, as much as I like the game and just uh, the kind of models that just enable the gameplay in a way, I'm also very much a fan of all the, the kind of non-gameplay specific models uh, that are a little bit weird, like the Bergeluther, for instance. Mm. So uh, one of the things that, sh that Paolo showed off for uh, kind of a long while ago, but that I haven't really seen uh, Hyder nor hair of since then, is the Excavator Walker mm. for the mercenaries. Mm. I mean, even if it doesn't really do anything, mm. even if it just sits there, yeah. I want it yeah, because it's definitely. so cool. It's so true, so true. Uh, I hear you, uh, and I agree with you wholeheartedly. <laughs> uh, it could be so fun to, to get that. Um, but, but other than that, I mean, there are some, uh, like, uh, for instance, the deep ones or the uh, the spawn of Shubnigurath that we, we know are coming, but yeah. we haven't really seen anything other than concept art for. Yeah. I mean, yeah, th that would be nice, yeah. definitely. Especially now that uh, my... The closest thing uh, to me that I really, really wanted was the was Nadir, the guy with the flying carpet. Ah, yeah, and yeah. now he's released, mm. so now I don't have to <laughs> get along for that guy anymore. Yeah. So well, the new PT forty seven models, of course, because uh, yeah, the Katusha, I, yeah, every one of them, yeah, uh, that it, because I. Uh, uh, I've stopped buying PT forty sevens, but I would love to have some more. I I, I feel <laughs> like uh, five, six, seven, eight more of those guys. But I want, of course, it would be nice to have different types of uh, uh, ones, uh, so it, it doesn't look too similar. Even though that's could be cool as well. But I I really look forward to seeing some more uh, PT forty sevens out there, and the the new Russian tank, the amphibious one, the Chinese Russian one, mm -hmm. of course. Uh, well, of course, since Paolo, uh, he already said he, he just did it for fun. But, I mean, the MiG, of course, uh, yeah. I know this is, that's <laughs> 10 years out. But I want to see it anyhow. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Whatever one could... Uh, I don't know if I've seen any, of course, uh, concept arts on any... Uh, uh, brigade troops, uh, oh, yeah. like mm. we talked about earlier. Yeah. Um, Trying to uh, think of others. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, you know, my really big thing that I was waiting for was these jumping frogs. I mean, yeah. So um, you and a oops. lot of other people, I think. Yeah. So uh, hmm. well, I'm, I'm almost already there. Actually, I'm, I'm, I'm at my Shangri-La place or something. <laughs> like that. That's nice. Yeah. For me, it's um, also been. I mean, a lot of stuff have finally been released mm -hmm. the game has come such a long way uh what i'm waiting for right now is basically more of the e-tanks mm, oh of course. yes that, that line true. has so far not disappointed me at all <laughs> uh, and i think we are just seeing like the the beginning we mm -hmm. are seeing just the start of all this coolness oh so, yes oh yes 
Uh, and yeah, uh, so. talking about that, I mean, uh, the tortoise. Oh. Uh, for the allies, oh. I mean the super heavy tank. Yep. That's also something that will be very, very nice when it finally arrives. Yeah. So definitely. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think that I still have the, seen the uh, response from Paolo that he will be making a, a, a version of the real crocodile for the allies and with the phaser. That mm-hmm. is, of course, something I, I, I so much hope that that will be arriving. Yes, sure. Of or later. course. Because uh, that's something I, I wanted to really, really get a look on. Mm-hmm. Um, then I will buy more. Um, uh, of course, it won't profit the studio because it probably will be Tamaya models. <laughs> I'm sorry, but 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 I would love to feel two of those. You know. Well, they at, at least they got the conversion sets you can get done yeah, as well. So. That's definitely the ones. And now I pulled the. <laughs> uh, the um, Corellia green shade up onto the face of Laura, so she is now camouflaged as well in her face. <laughs> I never. She's pretend, green with envy. Yeah, I never pretend I can do uh, skin and <laughs> flesh and stuff like yeah, well, that. skin tones is some of the absolute most difficult things for for yeah. models. So yeah, um, I, I just don't enjoy painting skin. I have to say. No. And I kind of did something very similar just now, but uh, with the with the black one with the null noil. Oh, okay. So yes, yeah. I have to try to correct that. But that's a little bit better because that's just shading you know, in her face then. Because, oh yeah, yeah, uh, sure, sure, sure. All right, uh, what's our next question, Magnus? Next question comes from Roger. Actually, oh. has two questions. Uh, first question: uh, Which character from the Dust Universe would be the best or worst roommate? Oh, uh, <laughs> best roommate, uh, chef, maybe. <laughs> yeah, well, that's a maybe good one. if he's in a good mood. Yeah, yeah. sure, sure, of course. <laughs> but he can uh, be he can be a real pain in the ass with those kitchen knives. Yeah, yeah. that's true. That's true. Uh, I, I believe cigarette would be the worst one. Yeah, probably. Uh, now, probably. <laughs> Frankenstein, maybe. Yeah, <laughs> Grenadier X. <laughs> I mean, most of the blues course, actually. Yeah. <laughs> don't chew with your mouth open. For <laughs> don't chew, for God's sake, oh, don't yeah. chew. <laughs> Eat outside with you, in the dustbin, as you usually do. <laughs> oh, shite. Uh, well, that's a good question. Well... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, could we think of anyone else that we were like? Uh, well, I wouldn't live. I wouldn't want to live together with uh, what's his name, uh, Professor, uh, the, the the new Chinese guy. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, 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 of course. Something, something wrong. Or yeah. Something. Yeah, 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 yeah. That would be. That sounds kind of unhealthy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that definitely would not be good. But uh, if we're talking about some good roommates, maybe as I think most of the uh, mu- much of the mercenaries are kind of interesting. I mean, if you think like uh, Emma, for instance, I mean, seems like a, f- a fairly decent person. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 We, we, one can always hope. Um, and uh, I think uh, the way they describe Basoka Joe in some of the, at least in one of the books and stuff like that, I, I think he would be a fun guy to be around. Uh, I mean... To uh, kind of wrap it up with a former question, I would say, in this case, I would definitely choose Kaori before Goliath. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I second the yeah, That's a good one. Yeah. Good one. Um, Yes. All right, uh, next question. Uh, yeah, next question also from Roger. Uh, is a rules question, actually. Can oh. you re-roll the rolls for your Tesla clubs if you have a VK stash nearby? I think so. Yeah, I would yeah, Because that. it is a Tesla weapon, so I would exactly. expect... Exactly, it has the Tesla rule, yeah. which is what I think would... would yeah, trigger it, so to say. Yeah. Um, so, so I don't yeah. see why not, actually. Well, hmm. I would say, though, that it would be very situational because when, when you, you don't want Carl and his hammer boys standing around waiting for something to happen. No, it's, it's more like, if the no, opponent the, brings it. Yeah, okay, exactly. Course, you can use your it. opponent's VK yeah. stash, I would say. Mm-hmm. That's very so, good. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Okay, and we just got uh, another question from Bill Hegg. Yeah. Oh, great. Um, Keep going, Bill. It's been a few months and episodes since Tito was released. Yeah. I just love the options he adds. Is there a unit that you will make sacrifices in your army to field? 
Mm. Oh yeah, it, it depends on the specific army, but yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, when I do play with the Endak, I will almost put, uh, almost always put in Tina. Uh, that's just that's just a given. <laughs> um, for for others, I mean, the, the, like uh, we we talked about this last episode as well when we talked about uh, Tito that. He brings so much interesting options, and a lot of the newer mercenary heroes specifically do mm. that. And there's there's just so much interesting stuff that you can do with them. So it's uh, it's Tito, it's Justine, it's Emma. I mean, um, oh. yeah, uh, there definitely are those kinds of units, but it depends on what army I'm trying to build. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I I of course. Uh always want to 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 have um uh, oh my lord uh, <laughs> allied woman with big wrench sorry i'm <laughs> rosie <laughs> rosie of course rosie i can i can do i can sacrifice things for rosie uh because i feel like whatever i place her however i place her she will do things and um i think she's good in all aspects of her uh, of her sh- shapes. I mean, she can be soldier one and soldier two, and still bring interesting things to the party. Yeah, sure. Um, definitely uh, must include if I play allies. Um, yeah, I would agree. Uh, I mean, she she just brings so much to the allies nowadays. Mm. Definitely. Uh, I wonder if it's. Hmm. I, I don't really know if I have one of those like holy grails that I would always play or that I really need. Well, yeah, I, I, I definitely uh, always I bring the Teslas when I play the Steel Guards. And I mean the Tesla rifles, I think those are super. Uh, I'm so irritated with myself that I haven't bought a second par- pair of them. Mm. Uh, also, that would uh, square off my new army of uh, frogs that I could use, switch those to KV-47s I have and then put in a, in a Tesla unit instead. Because uh, what I do, I play play two of the repair walker KV forty sevens nowadays, and uh, that is uh, not what I wanted to do, but that is what I do. So uh, because I had fourteen points left, and I, well, it was a, I wish I could have used the uh, the te- another Tesla squad. I mean, it, it definitely is easier in some armies than others. I mean, in if you are doing a steel guard army, everything you take out is quite a lot of points yeah, yeah. so it's hard to to find those kind of real one-to-one substitutions yeah so yeah uh, it's uh, it's a bit tricky there yeah but though, also i feel that uh, those uh, tesla 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 frogs are really almost as much of an auto inclusive I, I i always had like i mean i couldn't get a better auto inclusive um but that's well that's just me. Yeah, sure. So, how are we now on the question front, Magnus? Uh, we don't have any more questions so at the moment. That so. is very interesting. So that means maybe is it time to get uh, our brushes down and compare? Uh, yeah, I feel you're yet. a little bit <laughs> cocky. No, no, let's let's just yes, let's trade some water for uh, for this uh, a little bit more. Uh, I would love to do a little bit more. So that's uh, uh, now you get your chance, you people out there watching live. Do you have any uh, mm-hmm. questions for us? It's uh, I know there's a little bit of a delay on the stream, yep. but if you have something that uh, you really want to ask, now is your chance. Yep. Uh, let's just see. There's nothing really back on the back burner here. Nope. There, I don't think so. <laughs> is there any old questions we, we never got to or something like that? Do we have anything in the pipes that we... Uh, we we uh, probably have, but I don't really have uh, oh. <laughs> any overview at the moment. So. Ah, okay. Yeah, well, that, yeah. that hurts. Um, um, so like we said, see. this is kind of an impromptu ad hoc episode. We take things yeah. as they come. Definitely, <laughs> so definitely, definitely. It's a weird one. Yeah, not yeah. every If we do another live show, not everyone will be like this, I think. No, <laughs> most likely not. Um, and I actually look forward to playing live as well. Uh, because, that was also um, be, going to be really fun and interesting, I think. Yeah. We tr- definitely try to schedule something uh, in, the, in the near future, I, I believe. Yep. Yeah. 
that is actually well I, I just feel like we you and I have played a little bit and but mm, it's been a while now since I've been able to to get my dirty paws on uh, Magnus and I really like to uh, you know <laughs> and also we have that three t three way scenario we, we should play more uh, because I feel that's yeah, uh, yeah I mean so that's that's that a very a cool different one. thing yeah it's a very different thing and uh, there are uh, stuff you can do with more than two players as well uh, besides just that scenario also, also of course mm -hmm. but uh, just to kind of round things off then to get you guys some time to finish up what you're doing yes, please. Uh, we really like some feedback from all of you out there both audio listeners and live viewers video viewers on youtube uh, is this kind of format with a little bit more improvised is this something that uh, we should try more of i mean i think we at least had some fun yeah <laughs> i'm not sure how fun it is to to uh, listen to or look at but we we are trying at least to uh, go by our usual schedule but it, it we definitely feel that it's uh, weird <laughs> yeah but i feel like we, uh, we it's it helped me keep up the pace a little bit I, yeah. I think i've been more perhaps I, it's just me you should be doodling perhaps uh, in the coming episodes as well yeah you, you do have that kind of that, like uh, i said uh, at the start that kind of uh, multitasking personality mm -hmm. in a way yeah. Yeah, yeah i was a bit hesitant i thought this could be an interesting ex experiment but i felt that maybe it will not work for me at all but i mm -hmm. think it worked very well and and hopefully people have been enjoying it as well yeah uh, so i would definitely be up for doing more of this i would say oh, good 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 all right so okay, with so that okay. said i think it's time for us to show our results well uh, <laughs> yeah well okay yeah this is not a finished product but it shouldn't be so uh, no it's just how it's far just, and uh, yeah, yeah. to and to be honest i mean uh, you how how did it go for for you, you i mean uh, if we start with you Lula, uh, yeah. you said that you were trying to get some paint on uh, all of the squad how yeah. did it go there well uh, it's only some base white on one of them and some face uh, paint as well on him then two the two other ones are uh, not done at all yeah so i need more time to do that apparently uh with laura i had uh i was think I'm, I'm 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 fairly pleased with what i've accomplished so far but uh next up is some gold on the bullets i will do some an armor wash and then i want to go and redo some of the orange camouflage because they are all faded away with the with the uh, with the colors that I've used so far, so so I have to go over with this uh, towel light okra that I will do. Um, just reminding myself when I listen to this yeah. what I was thinking about, and then of course it's trying to get the face going for some reason and uh, doing some more stuff over there, and then perhaps it will it could look like a playable mini. I yeah. think um, very nice. Yeah. I was over ambitious, so I have a bag here with some stuff that I would put on the base, actually, but that never materialized. So. I, I really like the fact that you did get some detail on the wires of the suit. Mm. I mean, uh, that really Thank makes you. it pop uh, a lot, I would say. And that's my regular uh, axis wire color, because I, yeah. I, I, my other uh, Type 3 infantry has always orange wires for some reason. I don't know yeah. why. Very it's cool. the same thing that the... SSU ones usually have the light blue or some of the walkers as well. I like walkers always has light blue power oh, right. wires. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. And for so, you, Magnus, you, you were kind of, uh, in, a, in a way, uh, you were at the disadvantage because you tried to play, uh, paint the whole squad. <laughs> Uh, well, yeah, I, like I said, uh, I wanted to do them in one go. That's how I usually do it. So uh, I've been painting all five of these models. So... I don't know if it's possible for people to see anything. Yeah. So uh, so I did not manage to paint any of the metal. So like the weapon is not painted at all. But at least I got most of the other stuff. And and I to compare it with the this is the the, the premium the model. Yeah. Button. And if if you just that compare the of... if you just compare the shades of them, I mean, yeah, I definitely so think so that after the... you you've matched it very well, I yeah. would say. So after when I painted the the guns, uh, I'm gonna put a wash on everything, a brown wash on the on the guy, and a black wash on the weapon. 
And after that, maybe a little bit of highlighting to, to get some, of, especially on the uniform, because it's it will be too dark otherwise. But um, yeah, it's not it's going to be finished quite fast now, actually. So it, it, it doesn't have to take too long to complete the whole unit, actually. No, you're really good on no speed painting. But I mean, painting. these are sort of easy to paint as well, because you don't have to... There are some details. I need to do some... Um, some of the leather straps and, and, and so as well that I haven't done yet, but they are fairly easy, so you can do this fairly quickly. Yeah, so. and for me, uh, I'm actually very happy with the way it turned out, uh, even if I had trouble with, uh, <laughs> with the lead belcher here, but I, I managed to steal some <laughs> from Magnus. And I also forgot to bring uh, kind of leather uh, or wood uh, paint. But otherwise, I'm pretty happy with the way it turned out. I mean, it's not that far off my usual kind of standard, to be honest, no, at least in my good. opinion. It looks good. And uh, the, the things I would probably do more with is just try to get some more highlights on, uh, on the weapon so they look a little bit sharper. Maybe some more detail on the face, but at the same time, don't really want to destroy it mm -hmm. <laughs> because that's a very, very big risk. And um, painting these very bright colors is always a challenge. And uh, that's one of the reasons why it at, brought uh, at least two different shades of green to try and make the green uh, pop a bit more, to mm. get some more uh, just, sh yeah, three dimensions to it. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that, and uh, of course I want to, take the whole squad and try to match that. So it's going to take a little bit of, uh, of work to get the whole squad up to a uh, matching level, but... Maybe a little bit of blood dripping on the could blade. Could be, could be. So, yeah. and yeah, uh, This is nice. Yeah. And uh, like we said at the start, we're going to take some nice pictures of these models. We're going to put them up at dustwarjournals.com so you can get a good look at them. And uh, vote for which one uh, you feel made the best yeah. work in this short amount of time. Yeah. And uh, from all people who uh, Vote participate, who yeah. votes uh, in this, we will raffle out a prize which will be revealed in our next episode. So, until then, I would like to thank everyone out there live for joining in, for watching. I would like to thank everyone uh, else for l watching or listening uh, after the fact yeah. for staying with us for this weird episode <laughs> and uh, I would like to thank uh, you two guys for joining me here today for this experiment and uh, at, finally I would like to say to all of you out there thanks for today and we shall see you on the battlefield Thank you for listening to Dust War Journals. You can find us at dustwarjournals.com or on social media at Facebook, Twitter and Instagram at Dust War Journals. And you can find our Patreon page at patreon.com slash dustwarjournals. All music used in this podcast is made by Kevin McLeod at incompetech.com.